Yeah, what's up everybody? Welcome. I know we're early uh, this Friday, but I kind of like this 11.30 slot. Maybe you guys have had some lunch. Not bad. And uh, we have got a great guest on our show. Welcome to Access Omaha 121, I believe. And uh, it doesn't really matter what number it is. I right know, because we're getting up there. That's right. So. And we've got a great guest. And I'm going to let Levi kind of take this over. But happy Friday. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. And uh, Levi. Tell us who we got today. Yeah, man. We got a good buddy of mine. This is a longtime friend. His name is Justin Knapp. And actually, guys, we kind of grew up together, high school on, and uh, I spent a lot of weekends out at his house, his, his folks' house, too, playing paintball, doing camping, cool stuff like that. Um, but now he's actually now in adulthood, segueing mm. himself into a life of a servant, which we're very, uh, we admire quite a bit. And uh, he's got a really cool story. We wanted to bring him on, see if he could share it, give some insight into his experience. So Justin actually holds two service-related professions. He is a busy man. Busy man. <laughs> um, he is a lieutenant in the Army. Uh, he's been serving for 16 years. Um, we thank you so much for your service, Justin. Um, also, he is a detective with the Omaha Police Department. So he's got some really cool insight. We figured we'd bring him on today hear a little bit of his story. He can't get too detailed into some of the specifics, but uh, get a little bit of a good insight as far as what a life of service looks like, what brought him into the roles that he has now, and what that looks like for his life. So Sweet. Well, let's dig in, Justin. You ready for this? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so can you, can you kind of tell us a little bit about personal story? Like, where'd you grow up? Uh, brothers and sisters, all that good stuff, and... Uh, any cool stories you might have? Oh boy, growing that's, up, that's not... maybe omit Levi from <laughs> yeah. Levi stories. And Levi's a big portion of it. I think they yeah. were pretty much all of high school, yeah. so even through graduation a little bit. So I went to the army, uh, but I was born in Blair actually. But then we moved away a short time later. Uh, went to grade school in Omaha for a few years, and I moved back to Blair around first grade, and that's where I finished my education and graduated high school from Blair. Uh, I was huge into playing baseball growing up. I uh, played baseball my whole life. Uh, kind of gave it up for the Army. I don't think I would have went on to play too far up the chain, but I, I did good UNL at one point and tried out when I came back from the Army, and I got cut the last day of walk-on tryouts. So, uh, at, least, at least made it to the last day of tryouts, but there's nothing I would relive or change uh, going the military route in the Army. Uh, it was great, but I, I have uh, a brother. He's a couple years younger than me. You've met him several yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, he lives out by us. What's up, Danny? Uh, yeah, I don't think he's listening. Shout out, <laughs> Shout out Danny. <laughs> he's working hard right now at uh, Cargill. I've uh, got a wife, Haley. Mm -hmm. uh, two kids now. It's crazy. One's already three. What's up, uh, Haley? Yeah. One's, That's too long. We need to hang. She's working from home, but uh, I don't know if she's really listening. Uh, she okay. might be. <laughs> uh, two kids now already. It's crazy. She, the oldest is three-year-old, Olivia. And the other's already about a year and a half, Nolan, little boy. Yeah, right on. I heard he loves baseball. He's carrying the baseball around with him everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got like a thousand baseballs. He'll go pick them all up and he yells ball and whatnot. So hopefully he'll go that route also, yeah, yeah. play some ball. Um, other than that, it's kind of my life. I live, live back up towards Bennington Blair area now. And uh, in the Army National Guard, it's my part time gig that's almost a full time job, actually, in, in itself. And then Omaha Police Department, where I've been there for almost ten and a half years now. Yeah, Ooh. wow, it's like a crazy record. It's funny too, like so moving back here uh, from California, and then of course reconnecting with Justin and stuff. And you know, I think at one point we were hanging out a little bit right after we moved back, and I was like, "What do yeah. you even do, dude?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm with the police department." I'm like, "You're a cop? What? Like, how did I miss that?" <laughs> you know. So it's very cool though to kind of get to see you know personal growth and development and stuff and where you've gone with your life and things. And uh, Ryan and I were talking uh, earlier today and also yesterday when we were talking about some of the notes and stuff for today's conversation. And it was funny because when I lived in California, I'd come back to see some friends and you know we'd all go hang out at Justin's house. I mean, this guy owned his first house when he was like 20 years old. So always kind of admirable for you know some of his life progress and stuff like that. And we'd go, oh yeah, let's go hang out at Justin's. And, you know, go over there and buddies would be hanging out over there and it's like, man, you own this place already? Like, yeah, so uh, it's very cool. But share with us a little bit about, and this is for me, maybe some will be new information for me even too, but share with us a little bit about like what, when, you know, our latter years in high school, 
looking into going into the military, what were the big drivers for you? What made you think about making that move and then ultimately make that decision to, to push into that life of service? Yeah, what got me into that path was, uh, you know, Jim Schaefer. Of obviously, course. Obviously, hopefully yeah. he's listening, he's probably not though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I still talk to him once in a while. Me too, yeah. Out. yeah. Uh, but we used to paint parking lots together mm -hmm. back in high school. And those, those are crazy hours. You usually have to do it on the weekends because you paint overnight uh, when all the lots were closed. Uh, but we did this for a buddy, uh, Kevin Newman. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was, I believe, either a major or lieutenant colonel at the time. And he was in the Army National Guard. I uh, actually retired as a full bird colonel. So he moved his oh. way up. I think he was almost 30 years in. Wow. Uh, but he was the driving force there. He just kept always sales pitching us. We'd be working for him, come back to his house, which was his office, and he would just pitch it to us. Be like, hey, you should think about this. Or do you have any plans in your future? What do you want to do? Like, what about school? This and that. Mm -hmm. And he just always pitched it that way. And, and he never pressured. But uh, finally, me and Jim just talked about it. And we're like, well, what can, what can be better than doing this? I mean, we could go experience some stuff that not a lot of people get experience, yeah. uh, go through basic training, go in the military, maybe get to shoot some guns, do some fun uh -huh. stuff. <laughs> and so we're like, huh. And, then I, and I looked at it, the big part I looked at is, I didn't know how I was really gonna pay for, for college. Right. And at the time they had tons of incentives for helping out with school and paying for your school. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, what do I have to lose here? Right. Other, other than my baseball career, uh -huh. so it's all good. I don't have any regrets on that, but, um, so Kevin Newman, talked us in anyway he just said and he said i'll hook you up with the recruiters i'll hook you up with everything you need to do i'll get you all the resources and uh, uh he helped us wow. get in. so me and jim i think went through in processing together went through all the medical yeah and raised their right hands and swore in the same day wow uh, which I, I can't remember exactly i must say it's march 15th of 2003 and then can't remember the exact uh, yeah <laughs> march 14th and march 15th okay. I'm, I'm off a day but, okay uh we, we that was our my senior year of high school was we actually did it yep uh, when we were still in high school, so yeah. I was 17. But uh, uh -huh. another driving force too was just listening to the news and hearing everything that was going on. Yeah, at the time. In the Middle East and everything. And everything yeah. was just starting to kick off over in Iraq. So like, what's a better time to, to do this than now? Yeah, exactly. Do you still keep in contact with Kevin? Oh yeah, yeah. I talk to him every once in a while. I was talking to him actually probably a couple weeks ago. Okay. So he's doing pretty good. He's actually, like I said, he retired five, ten years ago now, but uh, wow. he still paints parking lots. Does he? Mm -hmm. Good for him. He owns the business and he goes out and paints the parking lots. So. Um, tell us some stories about your military service, if you have any. Anything you want to share? And what's yeah. what's like a cool place that you've been or He's cool like, experience? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's think about this. Uh, I don't want to say anything bad about the Army. Sure. But, uh, it's just not as fun as some of the other ones. If you go Navy, Air Force, you might like Pat and I remember Pat yeah, talked to him all the time. He gets to go to cool places like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, all all these cool places that are, aren't too bad. But in my career, I haven't gone anywhere too fun per se. But when I was over in Iraq, uh, we were unfortunate enough to be there when they were doing the surge, and oh, we yeah. got it extended an extra six months. Mm -hmm. So I was gone like two years straight with like a two week vacation in the middle of it. We got wow. to come back for two weeks, but. Uh, once we got extended that extra six months, they uh, allowed us like a four day pass uh, mm -hmm. down in Qatar. Okay. Which is kind of in the south southeast of like Iraq and Kuwait, down off the Persian Gulf. Uh huh. Uh, I got a four day pass down there, and we had to stay in a little army base, but it was pretty safe around there. And so we were allowed to sign up for uh, activities where you go out in the town and go down to yeah. uh, Qatar and I hear check the area. It's a lot of money, really nice. Wow. It was. Just, it was sweet time you got two beers a day they allowed you because oh. all the time you're overseas you can't drink sure so sure. they give you beer tickets every oh, day okay. like two drinks that uh, might have been a few times i might got a couple extra tickets from others but, <laughs> um, that's about the coolest place that i've gone a lot of other places i've gone to uh haven't been so nice uh just got back here a couple months ago went out to fort Irwin, california mm -hmm. sounds fun sounds like a great area everybody's like oh you want to california i'm like eh, it's not gonna be that fun and I mean, it, it has moments, you gotta, gotta hang out with the guys. Uh, that's always the fun part of the military is you, uh, you build those friendships that mm. last, last like forever in a lifetime. I still talk to a bunch of guys, like every course that I ever go to in the military, uh, I always meet new people because you go to random courses and it's just you from your state going to, uh, like, I don't know, California, or yeah. like, sometimes we go out to Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. uh, for. Wood, Missouri, and I, I just meet new people every time I go there, and I still talk to a bunch of those people. You met them for like a month. That's cool. You got to know them and build yeah. those friendships is based on that. But um, out in California, it was 
it was, the bombing was fun with the guys, but other than that, it was a lot of training. It was a desert. It was hot. Ah, it, yeah. The wind was blowing. You're eating sand. I think it was. I'd actually rather be back in Iraq than there. Wow, <laughs> that's something. <laughs> How how hot was Iraq? I remember that. Uh, there were some solid stories. days where I think they had like a, a thermometer that hit like 135. Oh, but no, it did, feels right? better than it does like outside right now. Being really? Like, 95 out right now with yeah. humidity. It it almost is better over there too because it's a dry heat and so you don't you're not just in there soaked. It dries yeah. off you pretty quick. Interesting. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah. That's- that's crazy. But it feels like an oven in your face when you go outside. So that's, what I've, that's what another uh, friend of ours explained to me. He's like, you know when you like go to open up the oven and you get that first like, yep. he's like, that's what it feels like when you open up the door and walk out. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound like fun at all. Uh, uh, you know? <laughs> but, um, hey, you were mentioning about, and I, I hear this a lot and it's big for us, you know, but um, when people talk about their military experience and you kind of hit on it was the relationships, mm-hmm. you know, and that's big for us. And I, I think that's kind of interesting and, um, was wondering if maybe you kind of hit on it, but maybe go into more detail as far as like just the importance of like that trust and relationship that you get with people. Um, especially as you go on, I'm sure missions and things like that. Like how do you develop, how do you develop that trust? in relationship with those people quickly, especially when you get called out to go on yeah, certain missions and things like that. Yeah, I mean, usually you're gonna be with those group of guys for a while, like, so my train up, we did a long train up, train up usually it's a lot shorter now, uh, but you're with those same people day in and day out, uh, so you get to learn their personalities, how they react to certain situations, and then it's all about training. It goes back to your training, you know, at the police department, we do a lot of training, and uh, you just rely on that. It's just like second nature then mm-hmm. getting to know each other and how everybody's gonna react to certain situations. So but yeah, it's it's huge to develop those relationships and kind of know all your people. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's important. Yeah, the relationship thing that you touched on, it's always big, man. And I'm curious about that too. You always hear about a lot of military folks, like it's it's a brotherhood, right? You build the bond mm-hmm. and when you're over there, that's the focus, right? Focus on your brother, your person, you know, the relationship, the people that you're with, make sure that they're safe, you're safe, you're making smart decisions, executing together. Um, you ever seen any uh, combat or anything like that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the first, you, you I'm, no, I'm the first to not, not uh, try to drag myself up and make it glorify myself. For the most part, when I was over there, I was, in all honesty, I was fortunate, I guess, to be on base security uh, probably 75 to 80 percent of the time most of my time was sitting at a gate uh, in a tower okay uh, but I mean you still had some artillery rounds are you armed you're armed for, armed for sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when you're in a tower you're actually have a big old 50 cal okay gun mounted up there yeah you can reach out there thousands of meters wow uh, but they would lob try to lob mortar rounds at us and we had a few that hit pretty close uh, Whoa. funny story I had was a uh, one of the guys was taking a, a bathroom break at a, the Porta John uh-huh. and uh, a mortar hit pretty close to there. And strap, luckily getting a hit with a shrapnel, obviously hit the, the porter John as he was in there. Oh, uh, but I bet it's scary. Yeah, I bet it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's but, like, hey, how did you pass? Uh, I was I was in the poor John, and that'd be horrible. <laughs> yeah, not good at all. No. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, that's good stuff, man. I think thank you for sharing some of your experiences there. Um, I guess one thing we're kind of curious about is um, uh, maybe you want to touch on this maybe his transition and yeah yeah so like obviously okay you leave high school go in the military um, and then you come back to Omaha so I've, I've got kind of a twofold question too because I always like to know this because we live in Omaha right yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was it about Omaha that made you want to come back and serve here and at what point, if you had a choice, were you in the military where you're like, you know what, I think I'm gonna go into law enforcement and Omaha's the place that I wanna do it. Like, how did those two things kind of coincide with one another and yeah. walk us through that thought process? That's a good question. It was, it was probably the last month we were overseas and getting ready to come home. A couple of guys were looking for jobs and we were all kind of starting to think, like, what are we gonna do when we go back? Cause you're just, you know nothing other than you're on this deployment for the we were gone two years mm-hmm. and you're trying to figure out well, what, what do I want to do with my life when I go back outside of the military like what am I going to do and uh, I really didn't have the greatest idea I, I 
I wanted to fly planes, so I came back and I did go to UNL for like, I was over there for like a semester and flew planes, uh, fixed wing planes. I had about 20 hours of flight. And it was fun, but it gets really expensive too to, to have a hobby like that. Uh, but anyhow, then backtracking, we were, we were just getting ready to come home and some of the guys started talking about law enforcement careers and started talking about flying for law enforcement. And we go, you know what, that sounds like a pretty cool gig or sweet yeah. job. Like, maybe I should look into that. So a couple of the guys actually said Omaha police were taking applications and hiring. Uh, so they were putting apps in. So I started looking into it, did some research, and I was like, oh, this, this doesn't sound too bad. And I've always lived in the area. I've uh, obviously lived more north of Omaha towards Bennington and Blair area, mm -hmm. which is more, more small town. Uh, but I also looked at some of the smaller agencies and nothing bad against them. I just looked at Omaha as being the best of the best in the area for mm -hmm. law enforcement. Right. I was like, wow, it's, we get a, it's very diverse. Uh, it's a big city. Uh, I had a lot more to offer. So I was like, wow, it sounds cool. So I, I put an application in, went through the whole process the first time, didn't get hired. Mm -hmm. And it's a long process. That was like a nine month process to find out, oh, you didn't get hired. So. We kind of deflated, like, oh, do I really want to do this? And I just wasted nine months. Well, now you just went back at it, applied again, and the second time I applied, I, I got hired on. Awesome. So, and that's when I was going to UNL, flying planes, and I got the call saying, hey, you want to accept this position with Omaha Police Department? I was like, yep, I'm going to ask you twice. <laughs> so uh, and so I, I had quit school, which at the time, that was kind of hard, too, because I went to the military to help pay for school and do all that. And mm -hmm. I was only like two years into my degree. Uh, and just start flying planes, which was, which was a lot of fun. So you were going for an aviation degree? Yeah. See, that's news to me, guys. I get mm -hmm. to learn something. I didn't yeah. even know that. That's awesome. Yeah, I flew, I, flew a, I think, like Cessna, like 150s and 172s. And wow. 20 hours of flight. That's it was cool. fun, but uh, like I said, it's very expensive. Yeah. Hobby, so. Um, so, yeah, I got hired on. It was the best thing that could have happened. Wow. Cool. So tell us about that, like getting hired on. What's that look like? You got You kind of go back through basic essentially right again it's now it's different it's PD training and you have to deal more with how do we deal with interacting with folks and you know yeah. uh, going back to the academy it's just kind of almost like a basic mini basic training is they're just basically breaking down trying to build you up to to be uh, what they want you to be and be a solid police officer so yeah it's, it was kind of hard going back to that mentality again uh, like a basic training when mm -hmm. you've been there and done that yeah but, uh, you just put your mind to it and and I'm the type of person that if I want to mind something, it's going to happen. Like, right. Uh, so you just push yourself through it, uh, and then you, you go through that the basically the like, police academy, and you mm -hmm. roll into what's called the FTO program, the field training officer program. We ride with the veteran officer for like 15 weeks, okay. where they basically critique everything you do, and mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of it, like the last few weeks, they're there, but they don't say anything. They just let you operate, do everything, they're grading you, and making sure you're, you're fit and ready to go out on your own. Wow, interesting. Okay, guys, so if you ever see two police officers cruising around together, that's probably what's going on, right? Sometimes they okay. do have two officer view okay. cars that cruise around, but uh, right now I think there was another academy class that just graduated, so I think there might be some on the streets right now. Interesting. That's, that's what I was going to ask, because I, I start to see that more often now, like if I see someone get pulled over or something like that, like I'll, I'll see two police officers now where one goes to the passenger side mm -hmm. and the other one goes to the driver's side. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Like, I wonder if they're tag teaming a lot of stuff now just because of yeah. the craziness of what's going on in our world and all that kind of stuff. But I'm sure it's probably more for safety and yeah. also training. training. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Like, I'm, yeah. it's interesting. So, so the detective thing, yeah. that's, that's yeah. fairly recent, right? Uh, yeah, I've been doing that just over two years now. Oh gosh, okay, wow. Yes. Maybe I'm we're, I'm behind on catching up, bro. Uh, it's, yeah, we've only <laughs> talked a few times here and there over yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, two, about two years ago, I, I was actually at, on military orders down in Fort Leonard Wood doing my officer training. Okay. Because uh, in my military career, about year 12, I switched over to become an officer. Yeah. Um, so that was another painful process where you have to go through like almost a basic training again mm -hmm. and treat it poorly. They're trying to break you down to develop you as an officer then. Uh, so that was tough after doing it for 12 years and be like, oh, now I gotta go deal with basic training again. Uh, but I did that 18 month program uh, and commissioned as an officer. And uh, when I was down doing my training for that in Fort Leonard, which was a four month program, I got a call like halfway through asking if I wanted to uh, take an auto theft position. Wow. Uh, so I worked in auto theft for my first year. And then when I had the opportunity to take the robbery position, I, I moved over to robbery. 
Uh, and so now I work in the robbery department, and I have to give a shout out to Lieutenant Karis Starling, who's supposed to be watching this right now. I said I would. Yeah. So. Best yeah, boss. Best LT. LT. That's awesome. <laughs> best LT. Hey, so that's that's interesting. I just learned something about. So how many different, uh, I guess, areas are there with like? Because you said you know I started out in Grand Theft Auto or Theft Auto or whatever, and then I moved into robbery. Like, are there different? Like, how many different areas are there? There's a lot of different areas. That's why that was my big uh, thing. Why I chose Omaha because like I said they had a lot more opportunities there. Like smaller towns. You're gonna have your street officers, your patrol officers, and you're gonna have, they might have a couple of detectives working. They do uh, everything. And then they cover everything. Yeah. So in Omaha, we're really specialized and broken down to, to units where uh, if you can go and become a detective, you have auto theft, you have a burglary department, you have felony assault, you have the homicide. Mm -hmm. Even from there, you can specialize and have to get into the canine unit. Wow. Uh, that's the specialized area. You got the, the air wing for the A1 helicopter. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably leaving a few others out. The CBSA, the child victim sexual assault units. Uh, the robbery units. Um, That's have, like the polygraph unit that do the background. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, so we're very specialized. Uh, I mean, we're eight hundred plus officers. So wow, that kind of makes it. My wife always makes fun of me because if I do get time to watch TV, uh, right? Like you I'm always live watching TV. like live, live PD, or I'm, wa I'm watching yeah. cops, or I'm watching like the first 48, yeah. you watch know, and all these different, yep. um, and she's like, why do you like this stuff? And it's, <laughs> it's exciting. To me, I'm like, I just like to know how the system works. Like I like to know, like, especially with like first 48, you know, like it's these guys and these detectives that come in when there's like an investigation with a murder and a homicide and they're like, man, the first 48 hours are like the most important because it's where you find, try to get the most evidence of witnesses. And I'm like, I like learning about that stuff. So get off me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> if I ever, you know, it's like if I ever wasn't doing real estate or retired from this and went into something else, like that might be the line of work that I'd be going into because yeah. I'm like, I always find that stuff intriguing yeah. and always want to, you know, want to catch the bad guy too. Like that's, I think what we're moving movie people right yeah, yeah, so right. we're always like talking about movies and stuff but i always like those those movies too because you're like he's gonna go kiss the bag yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh yeah that's that's interesting learning about the different areas and yeah. places that a detective can can work in the so really unique cool. uh, part of law enforcement is you typically never have two calls that are the exact same ever They're yeah really similar yeah. obviously every situation is, is different and so there's different avenues you take on all your investigations. Um, but it, probably, it keeps things fresh, right? Oh, yeah. The energy side, yeah. I'm sure. Yep. Uh, something I'm curious of is uh, how much more knowledge does it take to become a, a police officer, number one, a beat cop, then moving into becoming a detective? I'm sure there's a lot that goes in that, right? Testing, uh, paperwork, things like that. Can I just say yes? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is what it is, and I mean, it's, it's, there's a process. You have to be on for at least three years for the normal police before you can start applying for the specialized units. Okay. And then from there, you're just basically putting a resume together, mm -hmm. uh, and then they, you sit down on a panel and just have a uh, basically a conversation, ask you some questions, and then you have a, a scenario that you have to write up, and they basically grade you and rank you, and then based on that ranking, as if when they have spots come open, they, they take you. So wow. I mean, it takes a little bit, but it's, no, let me tell you. Uh -huh. So much smarter than anybody else. So yeah, I'm not. So he's smart, guys. Uh, he's smart. He's a detective. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be in the position that he's in if he wasn't smart. Oh, yeah. um, hey, I had a thought that came to mind, and uh, you know, as you've moved in and you've promoted yourself into like these different positions, like, is there a, another like stepping stone for you or something yes. in the future that you're like? Yeah, I would, I'd be interested in something like that if it ever opened up, or are you just kind of getting your feet wet now and like, I'm going to ride this out for a while, and then maybe if something else opened up, I'd look into it. Like, walk us through kind of, you know, like, secret service, so there's certain things that, like, you would be open to or want to do, or maybe I don't worry on the spot and want to be watching. No, no, like, I'm going to be the new MT. I have <laughs> contemplated that stuff yeah. before, and the secret service would be cool, but when you're looking at that, like the FBI, looking at it, you're, you're starting over, and I got a family here, we have a house here, mm -hmm. I'm content where I'm at, I really like my position where I'm at right now, so I don't I don't foresee that in the near future unless stuff yeah. changes, but I really like where I'm at. Uh, some of those, those jobs, we've had a few people 
leave recently for like VA job and stuff like that. And those are sweet gigs, but then they're bouncing around the yeah. first several years down in New Mexico and Alaska, yeah. and yep. moving all over. And I, I, I don't have any ambition to do that. I'm content where I'm at I'm right here in Omaha area. He loves Omaha. It. Yeah. The Metro's I know. Good. <laughs> I know, man. I love it. Tell us something that you love about Nebraska, though. And, and I mean, you're obviously a Nebraska native, like myself, and growing up here, have thick roots and stuff. Tell, tell us something that, you know, something you love about Nebraska, why you would want to live here the rest of your life. Well, I mean, I just like that uh, even Omaha being as big as it is, I think it's a little more friendly community and you don't quite get the high crime levels uh, like you do in big, big cities. Yeah. You don't have to fight the traffic. Yeah. Uh, but it's still more of like a smaller knit community mm-hmm. as opposed to your big, big city life. It's fun to go see those cities. Like we just went to Denver and it's, it's great. I love Denver, mm-hmm. but just too many people, traffic's horrible, crime uh, starts to get up there and it's just, it, it's fun to visit, but not to live, I don't think. Yeah, that's a good point. I felt that way a little bit from my time yeah. in California as well. And you know, there's just something about the Midwest, something about Omaha specifically that just really, yeah, it, there's no place like it. I know, we hear that a lot from people. We do. <laughs> um, and I would agree, I mean, it's, there, there's times where, you know, you go on vacation, you come, it's like when you get on the flight back and you're coming back to Omaha, you're like excited right. to come back home. Yeah. Like, this is home for me, like, this is it. And uh, as we think about that, we, we talked a little bit about, you know, where you're at. Um, a question we like to always ask is when you think about the impact, you know, specifically for you, mm-hmm. you know, because you're involved with the law enforcement and the police department and things like that here. What impact do you want to make in your community here in Omaha and the legacy that you personally want to leave behind as far as, man, if when I pass or if something were to ever happen to me, like mm-hmm. this is a legacy that hopefully I've cemented here in Omaha and what would that be? You know, what would you want people to say about you and that vision and that passion or whatever it is that legacy is that you'd want to leave behind? Yeah, that's a tough question, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I just look at myself as a modest person. I just try to do the right thing and hope to be a role model for people without really trying too hard. But uh, uh, I coach baseball for the, I don't know if you've heard of the Pace League. It's a police athletics for community engagement is what it stands mm-hmm. for. Uh, they have a website for if anybody's listening wants to go to and check it out, but it's like paceomaha.org, I believe. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's basically baseball, soccer, football. They do all those sports for kids, and it's all free wow. charge. Mm-hmm. No, no charge at all. And a lot of the coaches are, are police officers. And okay. we go down there and, and donate our time and effort uh, towards these kids. And we're just trying to, to build those community relations with these kids and trying to keep them uh, to make sure they're staying down the right path and yeah. doing the right thing and keep them and trying to keep them engaged, playing some sports. And so they get to see the other side of, they don't just look at you as an officer anymore, they're looking at you as more of a coach. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, they're not just, oh, this is just an officer, a police officer. Uh, so you get to, to build those relationships again, mm-hmm. like we were talking about earlier, with these kids and try to develop them and try to get them into sports and uh, keep them down the right path and doing the right thing. Uh, and again, like I said, it's, it's free. That's awesome. That's awesome. So parents, like some, some families I know, can't afford to, to send their kids to all these sports. Mm-hmm. Well, Pace offers, like I said, baseball, football, and soccer. Wow. And it's all free of cost. These kids get jerseys, okay. they, they give them hats, like gloves, like mm-hmm. anything and everything. It's all supplied. Uh, so it's literally just the parents just getting the kids there to show up. That's so and, cool. Uh, and they get a chance, opportunity to coach these kids and develop them. Um, so I mean, that's, I don't really have much of a legacy uh-huh. that, that other than I'm just trying to mm-hmm. Uh, help develop these kids and uh, the show, show them that, uh, that there's the other side of law enforcement yeah. that's yeah. officer. Mm-hmm. Now you, you mentioned like uh, you know like this stuff is free but if there were people listening or things like that where they'd be like hey we'd love to donate you know time or money or yeah. you know materials or whatever resources for them how could they go about doing that? I, w- I w- wish I knew a better answer, but I think if you just go to paceomaha.org, you okay. should be able to find links or email address in there that you can reach out to them. Uh, there's tons of businesses around Omaha that already donates a lot of stuff, but yeah, if anybody would like to, I think you just check out the paceomaha.org. Uh, there should be some email addresses and contact information, reach out to them, and they'll be able to set you up with that. Cool, awesome. So, wow, you got 
guys. That's so great. He's too modest, but this guy lives a life of service. I mean, honestly, yeah. even with your, your closing answer there, you know, some of the things he wants to do to give back. That's so powerful, man. Um, I'm, I'm like, absolutely, man. I mean, this guy, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate you sharing some of your stories and talking with us and sharing your time. This guy is a gentleman's gentleman. He'd give you the shirt off his back. He's always been a really good friend of me. <laughs> thank you for that. And, uh, yeah, man. Thanks so much. I hope you guys got something from today. I hope you, you know, maybe got a little bit of a window into the life of what it looks like. Um, someone who's moved their way up in the military, moved their way up into law enforcement, and has lived a life of service. Um, this is an awesome man here. Uh, is there anything you can tell our people watching, uh, maybe some other websites to connect if they're curious or want to find out? Um, anything more about maybe getting into law enforcement? Um, military, anything like that? Any yeah, plugs? I would recommend if anybody is coming out of a high school or in high school, or even if you're later in your life and say you had setbacks and you just don't know what you want to do, you maybe you got laid off, uh, the military is always a great organization. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to go the Army route. It's not bad. <laughs> you know, see all the cool places and do the fun things like Pat has and some yeah. of the other guys in the Air Force. Uh, but check out any branch of the service, uh, Army, Air Force, Marines, anything Na even the navy uh check it out because uh, they still have like signing bonuses that are twice whatever i like triple what i ever got uh and they have other benefits uh wow. include health benefits yeah um so it's great if you're looking to become an off police officer the omaha is starting to hire a bunch again okay uh, you can go to i think it's joinopd.org or dot com it's one of those two uh, join opd just google that and also, you can check out the cityofomaha.org page. Uh, that'll give you a lot of information. Um, it's not like cool. That. Sweet. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, yeah we appreciate really appreciate it. it. Thank you for your service. And uh, thank you for protecting us Yes. in, yeah. in Omaha and being a part of that. And shout out Omaha Police Department. Yes, we thank love our guys. service members. We love our we cops. Do. Yeah, we do. Without them, we would not be safe. So true, you know, guys. Yeah. Start with the best LT ever. There Ooh, you go. there's no <laughs> shout out. So uh, again, guys, if you have any questions, let us know for sure. Um, feel free to comment below. We will forward those on to Justin if there's anything specifically uh, with the things that he talked about today. Yeah. But uh, with that being said, it is noon, so you're probably on your lunch break. Enjoy your lunch. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the show today. And as always, happy Friday. Happy Friday, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Stay to cool out there. It's hot. Be safe. Amen.